ओके टुडे इस टॉपिक इज मोलिकुलर डिजीज सिकल सेल एनीमिया सिकल सेल एनीमिया इज अ डिजीज विच रिजल्ट इन द सिकलिंग ऑफ रेड ब्लड सेल्स द आर बी सी विच आर नॉर्मली डिस्क शेप्ड इज कन्वर्टेड टू सिकल शेप्ड ड्यू टू दिस ऑक्सीजन केयरिंग कैपेसिटी capacity got reduced the reason is number of hemoglobins will be less compared to disc shaped and these people will or these patients will suffer from anoxia or hypoxia now the reason for this disease is some molecular reason and the molecular reason will be discussed here in today's class now let us see what is actually or how this disease and its molecular reason is being identified first attempt to study the molecular reason was done by linus pauling linus pauling said that normal hemoglobin and sickle cell hemoglobin both are having some change in their or difference in their charge and they move differently in any electric field this was actually confirmed by linus pauling this lead to a new field of science a new technique and that technique is known as peptide mapping or protein finger printing and this is introduced by v m ingram technique is also known as ingram's technique technique is also known as protein fingerprinting or peptide mapping so let us move to this technique v m ingram he has taken uh, two proteins that is sickle cell hemoglobin and normal hemoglobin let us take this is sickle cell hemoglobin and this is normal hemoglobin and what did he do he digested this with the trypsin the enzyme trypsin enzyme trypsin cuts this two separately and forms certain fragments now these fragments are separated on paper electrophoresis electrophoresis is a technique where the molecules are allowed to move through the in electric field and based on their size their velocity of the movement uh, will be different now after doing electrophoresis then he rotated the paper and done next technique that is paper chromatography so what did he do he do he took a paper and to which he done spotted this sickle cell hemoglobin and done paper electrophoresis then rotated it into 90 degree then to the other dimension he has done paper chromatography the same way he has taken normal hemoglobin also to a paper and does it separately so after doing these two separation techniques let us see here he has taken normal rbc and sickle cell rbc and they are treated with tryptin the tryptin breaks peptide bond adjacent to lysine or arginine then done paper electrophoresis rotated into 90 degree then paper chromatography now these two papers are examined or compared for normal hemoglobin he got the spores like this and for sickle cell he got spores like this or the pattern like this now if you compare these two you can find that this fragment this fragment okay similar this one and this one similar and this one and this one also similar but there is a slight difference in this fourth fragment now 
this fourth fragment is taken and they have isolated separately both the fragments this fragment and this fragment and they have done sequencing sequencing as you all know it can be done by Sanger sequencing or Edman sequencing through this manner they have sequenced both the strands separately and it is found that there are some differences in these fragments all other fragments are same all other uh, fragments and their sequences are same but here the sequences is little bit different and they also found that a valine is substituted for glutamic acid in the case of sickle cell hemoglobin that means on that fragment all other amino acids were same but only one change that is valine in place of glutamic acid that means valine in the sickle cell and glutamic acid in normal so this was led to the discovery of molecular change behind the disease sickle cell anemia that single cell substitution of valine for glutamic acid at sixth position of the hemoglobin leads to change in the structure of sickle cell hemoglobin and make it more fibrous that result in the deformity in the rbc now this was identified and this technique is also known as protein fingerprinting once you do any protein these particular procedures you will get a particular pattern and that pattern is that unique for that protein if you do this for sickle cell if you do this for normal rbc this pattern is unique to normal rbc and this pattern is unique to uh, sickle cell so we can consider it as a fingerprint that's why it's also known as protein fingerprinting. Thank you.